keep young players focused because I know there's an important game tomorrow, but they, they hear the noise. They hear this program may be going to a, a bowl game. They hear about next year. So I, I know that I know you, you preach this all year long, but it seems like it's even more pressing uh, as big games continue. Well, I think it's excitement, it's passion, it's energy, it's fueled by our fan base. You look at four sellouts this season, they've been extremely supportive, and that's what we want. You come to the University of Tennessee to playing meaningful games, and to be playing games that, that matter in November. So that's kind of the philosophy of our program. Our players believe in it, and I think it's an overall excitement, but they've had great consistency, Paul, week in and week out, day in and day out, and we've never got ahead of ourselves and again we have to focus on the task at hand and that's a great great football team Saturday night let's talk about uh, Joshua Dobbs because uh, not too many of us knew his name six weeks ago obviously you did uh, how surprising was his performance and, and his play and 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 where does it go from here well we're excited obviously and uh, it's not surprising he's an individual that really gained valuable live opportunities last year uh, probably was not ready to play in the sec as a true freshman but uh, we thought he did a good job managing the circumstances and he's really been able to rely on those experiences that he had in the past to move forward and uh, he's an article engineering he's extremely intelligent he has a photographic memory and most importantly our players believe in him and he's showing great confidence he's making great decisions with the football and he's managing our offense I mean obviously there was there was a debate uh, about what to do with him but when you when, when it push came to shove I guess there wasn't much debating, was there? Well, when Justin Worley went down, and Justin was having a tremendous senior season for us, and uh, we knew what Josh could do along with Nate Peterman, so we made the decision that we weren't going to redshirt him anymore. And so we were going to put the ball in his hands and, and let him manage the offense, and that's a tribute to him. We always talk about the philosophy is, you know, you're never truly redshirting. You know, you have to prepare as a quarterback as though you're the starting quarterback. And it's a tribute to him that he was ready and and ready to step in and make the most of his opportunity. And that's really what it's all about. That's what makes sport very, very special is when you have an opportunity, you need to step up and take advantage of it. And Josh has done that. In, ter in terms of his mindset, though, I mean, obviously uh, you have to be prepared, but he probably deep down wasn't thinking there would, there would be much playing activity. Uh, talk a little bit about how quickly he was able to adapt. Well, I think, again, you go back to last year's experiences. When we traveled to the University of Florida last year, he wasn't even on the travel roster. And then three weeks later, he's our starting quarterback. So I think he really learned that, again, throughout the course of a long season, anything and everything can happen, and you have to prepare yourself. Also, you know, even though we were attempting to redshirt him, he still gained valuable repetitions. He was never really down on the scout team. He was still with us. He traveled all that so he was ready to go but really it's a tribute to him that he could step in and perform the way he performs and you know his first live game opportunities this year was in a very uh, mm -hmm. big game a rivalry game versus Alabama and he really stepped up let's let's close by talking about tomorrow night because sometimes you know we we lose sight you're preparing for a football game uh, in about 27 hours uh, the rest of us are pontificating about uh, who's going to be playing on, uh, on January 1st. And I realize uh, that, that's, that's interesting, too. But, but Missouri, for whatever reason, uh, I was uh, in A&M last week, and uh, those of us uh, so-called experts, we all, or at least most of us, look past them. Uh, even, even this week, uh, people want to praise your team. I'm not asking you to build up Missouri. Uh, you, I, I know you respect Coach Pinkle a great deal, but talk a little bit about them and, and, and why do why you think they, they, they don't fly under the radar screen, but they're pretty close to it. Well, the results speak for themselves, and all you have to do is watch video to know that they're one of the top teams in the country. And it's been proven over a body of work. It's been proven over an amount of time. And you look at Coach Pinkle. Their systems have been in place, I believe, for 14 years. They have built a program, not a team there. They're able to redshirt their players. Uh, you know, they are junior and senior dominated. And uh, it all starts with them on defense up front. Uh, I don't think we've played two disruptive defensive ends on the same team like Missouri. They're very, very disruptive. Linebackers are very active. They have the luxury of playing man coverage in the back end. And then offensively, it starts with Matty Mock. Matty Mock can create. He can take something and make something big happen. And then their special teams. They're very, very dynamic. So very well-coached football team. Give tremendous effort on every single play. And they know what they're doing. And, you know, Paul in sport, belief is a powerful thing. And they believe they're 
they're going to win every time they step on the field, just like our team does. Coach, I know, I know coaches don't like to talk about themselves and, and their and their own worth or or perceived worth, but uh, your your name pops up here and there for other jobs. Uh, some some would say that's a compliment. It is. Uh, I'm sure it's also a distraction. Uh, how, how do you approach that when when you hear or read or someone ask you like I am right here about that? <laughs> Well, it's it's only a distraction if you make it a distraction. I believe it's a compliment for what we're building here at the University of Tennessee. And uh, you coming back here, you just saw it. Rocky Top is very special. Yeah. And uh, I plan on being the head football coach here for a number of years, and hopefully we'll be doing this for many years to come. I hope so, uh, because... Uh yeah, we're, we're supposed to wear the the hat of neutrality uh, on, on programs and networks like this, but uh, I, I've been on this campus many different times, and, and I feel something today uh, and when I was here uh, earlier this year that I haven't felt in a long time. It's, coach, thank you for so much. It's special, and welcome back to Rocky Top. Thank you, Coach. It's thank great you. to be here. We'll be right back.